our guests me up and say hello everyone and i'm <laughs> john is coming on right now and i'm going to tell you a little bit about john and so let's put us up here and so hi john hey how's it going so john conafe is uh let me bring up your information here the director of business development at space flight and i've known john for a couple of years now we met was it said yeah. space a ASU. Yep. 2013. It was 2013, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. 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 And now we're both on the SEDS USA advisory board together. Yep. Exactly. Uh, it's so good to have you on Space Snacks. And and the reason why I'm so excited, John, is because you are just as much a foodie and as I am. And so let's start by talking about your love of food. Where did yep. that come from? Uh, honestly, my mom, that's my mom was an amazing or is an amazing cook. Um, and all while I was growing up, she would just cook this incredible food. One of my absolute favorites is her, uh, spaghetti carbonara that, that she would make. And we would, I mean, we would beg for it every, every <laughs> single day. I think it was like a once a month thing, just so we, so we didn't get plump, I guess. <laughs> and, <laughs> so um, <laughs> So can you, do you know how to make your mom's special sauce? Oh yeah, that's my, okay. that is my absolute go-to. Um, uh, whenever my partner comes into town, it's, that's, that's what we make. <laughs> and it's, oh, that's great. Yeah. So what about space? Where did your love of space come from? Um, honestly, I, I had a telescope, I think when I was 10-ish, and I was always very into, initially very into Egyptology which somehow very, very much corresponded with, <laughs> with space. Um, and so I kind of made this strange slide from, space, from Egyptology into space when I was younger, and then it kind of dropped off when I discovered music. And I mm. became wildly obsessed with music, as teenagers do. Um, and, then, uh, and then when I was going through, I went to the Air Force, and my love of technology and aerospace kind of came back in a really, really big way as I was, I was uh, fixing AWACS up in Alaska for, for about three years. Um, and so when I was, uh, when I was looking for um, leadership opportunities, as it turns out, <laughs> because I went up to, to a guy at Boeing and it was like, hey, I want your business development internship. And they were like, no leadership experience, come back. So oh. I went in search of clubs and I found uh, students for the exploration and development of space ASU. Uh, and the guy that was running it at the time had the pitch down perfectly. They had robots and rockets and, and uh, <laughs> rovers and high altitude balloon footage and everything. And I was like, yes, I want to be a part of this. <laughs> and so it became treasurer of SEDS ASU and then it was all over. <laughs> wow. That's so, that's so fantastic. Talking about the AWACS, you just brought back a memory that I actually dated a technical director for an AWACS out of, the, that flew an AWACS out of NATO once. And so I oh, got really? to stand on the, on the wing of one during at the air show at, I want to say it was Miramar. And just what an amazing aircraft. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, yes. uh, it's, it's incredible. Uh, it's it's technical capabilities absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Though if you as you walk through it, unless you're really really big aerospace nerd like we are, um, it can be kind of shocking. You know the the we would turn on the the radome at uh, air shows and people would walk in the back because they just saw transformers or something like that. Really really excited about all the cool flat screens and technology, mm -hmm. and then walk out the front a little bit disappointed because it was all the you know sixties <laughs> and eighties technology. But it, it, it works. <laughs> so. Yes, yes, it was really that. That was such such great memories of that. And so, yeah. when you think about space and space exploration, where do you want to go? Are you a Mars person, a Moon person, Earth, ISS? Yeah. So uh, I have been much to uh, a few of my friends' chagrin, uh, a Moon person for a very, very long time. Um, I love the idea of setting up, uh, setting up, you know, a, a station on the moon, just like we have in Antarctica, or a village for scientific prospecting and things like that. Um, you know, mining and that type of feasibility, I'm, I'm a little bit less interested in, even though I studied economics, and that's, you know, building a low Earth or cis lunar economy is 
is huge mm-hmm. and exciting to me. Um, but just the, the idea of being able to, the kinds of science that we could do uh, and, and what types of ways we could, we could shepherd back fresh food and fruits and how those become this like pre- precious luxury item, you know, taking an oh. island, kind of an island food culture to the nth degree, you know, <laughs> that would be really Could exciting. you imagine that? Like ordering moon cu- cuisine. And yeah. Being like, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that sounds fantastic. So what would you want to eat on the moon? Uh, so I have this really, I, 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 between high school and the Air Force, I, I had a record label, but in off time of cook pizza, like actually at a restaurant and everything. And so I have this really romanticized view of pizza for some reason and I, I just remember loving tossing it and learning how to roll it over my shoulder all that all that stuff and I had this image stuck in my head of a moon regolith hearth or or oven oh. and just sliding pizza in and out of that and what what different type of I'm, I'm sure there's you know people say it's metallic or 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 space tastes like metal or or burnt something um, but I wonder what kind of flavors, or if it would, if the flavors permeate through the the very fine, fine silt or not, because it is so fine. Um, and yeah, I just kind of have this romantic vision of eating pizza cooked in a in a moon regolith hearth. <laughs> you know? I I love that. I pizza is one of my favorite foods. Everywhere I go, everywhere I travel around the world, I try to find pizza to see how the locals are doing it. Right. Okay. Um, and, and it's so versatile and it, and it's sad because in the last couple of years, I've, I'm gluten-free now. Although I got to say that the gluten-free crust, the, the, um, cauliflower crust oh, yeah. is, so I, need- I can still have my pizza. Yeah. And- awesome. I really, really need to try that. At least cheese isn't off the table. That's, that's yes. where I would draw the line. Yeah. I, know, I know. Whatever ails me, I'm still eating the cheese and I'm drinking the wine. Exactly. <laughs> So what? Who's going to be having pizza with you on the moon? Who would you want to have pizza with? So, as I've kind of evolved my love of space and and mm-hmm. lower Earth geo economy um, and everything, you know, I worked for this company called the Astronus that was building geo telecommunication satellites um, to connect the world. And I realized that there are so many people that you know we're very very privileged in a way to be able to uh, explore space in the way that we do and there are so many people that don't necessarily know what the benefits are or why it's important to actually explore mm-hmm. such as the overview effect or all the, yeah. the scientific uh, developments that have come out of it and so honestly somebody that that had zero interest in going to the moon or going into space uh and maybe was maybe was a bit of a pessimist about it all and sit down on the moon sharing a really phenomenal moon hearth pizza and talking about, you know, how, how looking back at the earth and our, our yes. pale blue dot um, kind of changes their, their view of things, literally. Yeah. Well, isn't that what the, kind of the great thing to think about is the, the, to some extent, the democratization of space and, and opening up access so people can have that experience you're talking about and, and really um, transformative experience. Yes. And yep. what that would mean for humanity if we exactly. could do that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's a, you know, build, building out into the universe uh, can only kind of create opportunity, right? Okay. <laughs> Hopefully. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I, I just, uh, that's, a, that's such a lovely vision. I love that. And so going back to your mom and your family, did your mom teach you how to cook? She did initially, yeah. When I uh, I I didn't kind of care about cooking or think like because she was she was an amazing cook and I always loved food and we would always go out for incredible meals together and she would you know uh, there was never a ooh I'm not trying that you know there there was that would that would you would get the glare <laughs> if that, if that about. Um, so so I think I learned the definitely to love food first. From my mom mm. and try everything and that's such a big part of the adventure of food um easily translatable to space exploration <laughs> and um and uh and then as i started to get into it she started to get very very excited and we would start to cook together and yeah 
So. And so did you, did you, did you grow up in the Seattle area? Cause I know that's where you are now. Yeah. So I've moved, I've hopped around a lot. So I was born in Washington DC and then my mom and I moved down to North Carolina uh, mm -hmm. when I was about 10 until I was about 18 and then back and forth between the two. Um, and then Alaska for the air force, yep. Arizona for school, mm -hmm. uh, San, or back to DC for work for Bryce space and technology, San Francisco for work and now up to Seattle. Now, is your mom in that area? Do you get to see her and cook with her? She's over in uh, North Carolina. In okay, so you have to go across the country and, yeah. and yeah. To share a meal. And so when you get together, um, is it, I know, I must imagine that it's Italian night with her oh, yeah. uh, carbonara. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's uh, everything. We're, we're both, um, as I said, she kind of ingrained this this adventurous love of food. So if there's a new Vietnamese restaurant, we're going there. Uh, if there's um, a, a new Chinese restaurant or any type of food that hasn't been introduced to Wilmington yet or wasn't there before, we're going there first. That's that's our, yeah, that's kind of our tradition. And you know, if a new brewery opens up that that she's excited for me to try or or anything like that, yeah. And yeah. so when you think about, because I know you love to travel. Uh, is there any place in the world you haven't been to yet that you really want to go because of food and the culinary experience? Ooh. Uh, so, um, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> just like me. I, I know. I'm just like, where it, it just, everywhere is going to be delicious. <laughs> Definitely. Um, uh, right off the top of my head has to be um, Thailand, Cambodia, uh, Vietnam, uh, haven't been yet, yeah. and uh, one of my close friends uh, who also loves food so much, Simone, I saw her do a motorbike tour through um, through yeah. those countries, and A, I was just like, you're crazy, <laughs> and B, I, was, I just couldn't get over the idea. Um, I recently went to uh, uh, Bali for my birthday, and... <sighs> just had an incredible food experience there, cooked or, you know, took cooking lessons and everything, and right. all the fresh herbs and fresh, fresh spices and everything and a mortar and pestle and fried up together. Yeah, I need to I, go for that oh, one a bit more. I haven't been there yet, but I've been to Cambodia and I've been to Thailand and I took a cooking oh. class in each of those locations yeah. and the same right. thing. Yeah, A lot of people don't think about taking cooking classes when they travel, but it's such a great way to like really get into the local cuisine. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, I, that's food tours or cooking lessons uh, and restaurants are my, are my absolute first thing on the itinerary. And if I said I was a planner, I think everybody or anybody that knows me would probably laugh too hard to, to listen anymore but um, so usually on the plane i'm just like okay where do i need to go and then i'll somewhat kind of finagle my way into one seat at a at a restaurant that i really want to go to or something like that i know that's it you know that, that's one of the reasons why i was looking so much so forward to interviewing you because i'm the same way i yeah. am always looking for that that cooking tour or the place to go that is, or even just asking locals, like where, you know, where's a good place, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, instead of going to the the more, you know, touristy places, trying to figure out um, that unique meal that you just leave and you're just, it's just blowing your mind. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So is, is it, I know that pizza, we both have a love of pizza. So what drink, if you were gonna be on the moon, and you have your pizza. What is your go-to drink? Okay, so uh, this will probably be a two-part answer. Okay. Uh, because a anybody that wants me to be productive in space while I'm there, I've got to have coffee. <laughs> it's and, <laughs> and good coffee. Like I'm, if if I'm only allowed a specific allowance for food and not able to bring it, it's getting smuggled, and it's probably going to be cartel coffee from from Phoenix. Cartels. Yeah, yep. I, still, I still get it. I still get it brought in or subscribed to it and everything. So I'm gonna my, have to pocket full of that. If, if I'm my good friend, uh, do you know Aaron Bonilla? Aaron, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you met Aaron. She lives right across from Cartel, right across from Casey Moore's where the oh, Cartel nice. Coffee is. So is cool. literally <laughs> out our front door. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> and so okay. 
Are you drinking coffee right now out of your NASA yep. Mars mug? <laughs> this is my, I got this on my first day at NASA headquarters when I was there. And it's my favorite <laughs> mark by far. <laughs> We both have our orange space, and so I've got Spock here on. And I had to go work really hard because these were the glasses that you got at, like, Burger King or something, and oh, I yeah. needed to get the complete set. Nice. I, I've loved these glasses ever That's since. Awesome. <laughs> so, it, so you've got your coffee, and then is there another type? Are you a beer guy? Are you a wine guy? So I'm definitely a, uh, like an equal opportunity drink person <laughs> so i will love an incredible bottle of wine um uh bourbon and scotch i'm a huge fan of as well uh generally not which will always come as a shock to a lot of people but not the smoky um very mm. very heavily peated scotches mm -hmm. but uh more like vanilla caramel um kind of flavored scotches and then uh I do love beer as well. I used to brew when I was when I was younger, and there's there's a whole new level of appreciation once you smell like really pungent hit of malt as you're adding that <laughs> and, the, and the, the kind of euphoric uh, uh, hops and everything like that. So, well, it sounds like you'd be a fun person to be living on the moon with. You know, you got your music, your DJ in probably. Yeah. You've got the fire hearth going. You're brewing some, you know. There stuff yeah. in the side <laughs> we just have it all covered <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely but being in space and doing all of those things sounds sounds about perfect to me yeah <laughs> it does doesn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so do you throw parties are you a party thrower oh yeah absolutely that's uh i was when i moved up to seattle and i was looking for houses i kind of one of the fundamental conditions was that the, the downstairs had to have an open space to be able to hold like 30 to 50 people because I love, <laughs> I love hosting. I love people, which is difficult in this time, but it's okay. We will all party and uh, have a great time together soon. Um, and uh, yeah, so very much so. I love, I love hosting them. Um, I always, I'm always running around like crazy. I love making yeah. like a very specific cocktail for them. I think the last one that I had, which was the first in this house, was uh, uh, because I had just gotten back from Japan and Singapore. Um, I made a big batch of Singapore slings <laughs> and always have somewhat of a theme to it. And so do you throw, do you throw a space party? Yeah, I've been, I've definitely been known to. Absolutely. <laughs> that was, I think my going away party. Uh, yes, actually, it was my going away party in San Francisco, I threw a space themed party and I had um, very tall ceilings. So I had all the inflatable planets up and yeah. had my silver space suit on. And, um, and there was this, I'm trying to think of what it was called. I think it was Brightest Young Things. Probably one of the best space parties I've ever been to um, was hosted by Brightest Young Things while I was living in DC working for Bryce. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it was a costume party at the uh, Air and Space Center in the middle of DC and everybody just went nuts with it. Uh, Tanya, or good friend Tanya spoke um, and and it was just an absolute, absolute phenomenal space party. I loved it. That yeah. sounds awesome. I, I, you know, I didn't, I never threw space parties before and then now I'm like, I gotta have a space party. Oh, yeah. And the funny thing is, I've gone to Yuri's night at Kennedy Space Center a couple of times, and that's the biggest space party I've been to. And I was supposed to go to LA this year, but oh, uh, mm, yeah, you know, we had the global party, which was great online. Yeah. But yeah, um, so the, you uh, you spoke to Cass Anvar and Tanya, yes, right? Yeah, that's from awesome. the Expanse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was fun because he was talking. We were talking about food and sustainability, and one of the things that he noticed being in. Uh, self-isolation is that he's not ordering as much take. I mean, he's not, the amount of waste he's generating has gone down because he's not always eating takeout anymore. Oh, and yeah. so cooking more and just, uh, and so it's something that he noticed from a sustainability point of view. And so we started talking about food and sustainability and, um, and, and my whole thing about eat like a Martian, which is combining freeze dried fruits, meats and vegetables with, that are, you know, from around the world with locally grown stuff. 
Yeah. And yeah. so could you eat like a Martian? I think so. I, um, I have a few friends that I would probably have to learn a few things <laughs> from. You know, my friend uh, Ariel in, in San Francisco is big into like uh, urban foraging and especially yes. the mushrooms and everything. And I love, um, I love eating um, uh, mushrooms. Uh, and there's some, I'm kind of eyeing my neighbor's rosemary bush over here right now <laughs> to go possibly <laughs> take a snip because uh, I haven't been able to get rosemary for any of my cooking lately. Um, so, so that might happen. But I think, yeah, definitely. I've, I, I like to mix and match and experiment with uh, locally sourced and, uh, and maybe, maybe even difficult to, to cook foods. <laughs> Is there, now you said you're not a picky eater, so you, you're, and your mom had you try all kinds of things. Was there anything that you particularly remembered not liking as a kid, but now you're like, oh, how did I not like this before? I'm trying, there's, a, my mom might be watching this right now and laughing <laughs> heartily, <laughs> but um, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind, and it probably wasn't as a kid, um, but right now is, uh, oh man, I'm forgetting that sea urchin, uni. Oh, so that like 10 years ago, if I saw it, I would, I would have this very, very unpleasant reaction and everything. And I think it was kind of a texture and a, and a mm -hmm. visual thing. And now it's, I mean, it's absolutely like one of the first things that I have to try, have to order, have to have period. <laughs> like, it's, wow. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I'm trying to think of, it was very, very, yeah, um, hard to be picky when I was younger. So I can't, I can't quite remember if I did or not. Have, have you ever watched the show Bizarre Foods? Yes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's my brother's favorite show. So now could you do it? Because you're a traveler. Yes. Um, I would like to say yes. Um, there are, and I, and I, I would have a very, very, very hard time declining any or many foods. Um, I'm not terribly into bugs. I remember while I was in Peru, I saw um, roasted larva on mm -hmm. or large, large, very, very large uh, larva in the markets, um, and they were not. <laughs> I was not terribly interested. I think I could eat like a fried tarantula or or scorpion or something along those lines. Uh, and if um, if any of my friends that have given me a tour around Mexico City uh, um, are watching this, they'd probably laugh because I, I was a vacuum. <laughs> there, <laughs> every single stall, they're like, "You don't how." You just ate. <laughs> like, gotta try everything. <laughs> I did a I I ate a cockroach on the colony. Oh, so, really? oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. How was that? It feels like the it was salt. well we fried it so and dipped it in so much salt it tasted like a potato chip. So <laughs> yeah. you know, just crunch it up and and that was good. But I'm not a very experimental eater, and so one of the things I love to do is travel with my best friend Diana. Who will eat anything and yeah. so in peru we were doing a jungle trek where they picked up one of the nuts that had a grub in it and yeah. they cracked it open and they're like who's gonna eat this and i just gave her the shove forward yeah. and she was like oh you know and wow. the same thing in china you know the guy yeah. came out with a bag and he's like who's having rat and who's having snake and my friend diana was like i'll have a little bit of both oh, and i was wow. like Get the camera. I was this person. Get the camera yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's yeah. That I don't. I I'd like to say, like I said, I'd like to say that I would I would try them, uh, or be that person. But Dana sounds sounds brave and and impressive. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. And and so I found that she's a fun person to travel with because I can get my food fix when I, I'm not as adventurous through her. Yeah. But the colony challenged me to eat things that I normally wouldn't eat, like the cockroach and um, I think it's called Nutria or whatever. It's some kind of like rat that lives in uh, in oh, the marshes yeah. of Louisiana yeah. and yeah. snake and turtle. And yeah. so, Ooh. but I didn't do the skunk. Turtle, You did not or did? I did not. And, the, oh. and when they asked me afterwards, why didn't you try the skunk? And I said, I wasn't hungry enough. 
There was a food threshold line that you can, you'll check off and the hungrier you get, the lower that line gets. Yeah, and Scoop absolutely. was just below the line. And you know? there's, definitely, there's definitely a psychology to it that, that I understand that nothing about this will hurt me and nothing like, you know, it's, it's, it's all up here or, you know, just textures that I'm not used to and, and things like that. Um, and that ultimately it's, it's just what we've been introduced to in heaven. Um, so I, yeah, like I said, I think I'm, I'm probably a six, 6.5 <laughs> on the scale. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it brings us back to space exploration, what we will be able to eat, especially um, because of the, you know, the price of transporting food and especially when we go out to Mars even further away and insects become, you know, that becomes on the table because yeah. of the amount of protein that, you know, <laughs> the bang for your buck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, very true. Um, I think there's, is there a company that makes protein powder out of crickets? Yes. Specifically? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And, Cricket powder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be incredibly sustainable. Uh, yep. uh, yeah. I remember I ate a lot of, I think it was ants and ant eggs in while well, I was in Mexico City. Um, um, it's, it's just a part of a part of you'd, you'd have them in uh, with guacamole and tortilla chips or with you know with various types of food, and they were they were great. <laughs> you know, the, I, well, I can't remember what the name for the ant eggs were, but I love them. <laughs> I, I'm allergic to ant bites, and so oh. I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> Do you have a favorite celestial object? I this this is probably going to sound so basic, but I just love the moon. I mean, looking up at it and thinking that you know we we actually have footprints and boot prints there, um, all of the romantic connotations with it. Um, it's it's relation to pizza from from Sinatra, you know. <laughs> Footprints on the moon. I brought that up just for you. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, and that gets me every single time. Um, I have chills just thinking about it, but whenever I see a full moon and and just take a minute to look up and, and actually think about it, it blows me away. So, You know, that I, I'm the same way. I am definitely a moon girl. I, you know, when people ask me, do I want to go to Mars or the moon? I'm like, a moon. Yeah. Uh, it, it brings comfort again, seeing it, watching the full moon rise. Um, just there's something just magical and special about it. And it's fun to go to the Southern hemisphere and look up at the moon and being like, it doesn't look quite right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. and little things like that, that you're like, Oh, hey. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When I was um, younger with my, uh, when I was young, when I had my telescope, I definitely remember Orion was my, was my go-to, you know, just, it was easily recognizable. And I just loved, I love Orion. <laughs> yeah. I, I do too. And yeah. so I, I look for Orion um, in w the winter sky is when I'm trying to remember that is when Orion starts to rise and there's comfort in that. Is it winter? I think so. Yeah. I can't remember. I'm being so yeah. bad. And no. it's not like, or is it summer? <laughs> you can tell that I haven't thought about this in a while, but the horse had nebula. And again, I had a telescope and just being able to, um, recognize it in the sky and just yeah. having that that feeling of comfort and then when i go and i travel you know to different parts of the world and get out in dark skies and being able to look up and and see some familiarity there there's a yeah. comfort to that very much so absolutely i couldn't agree the more. uh so i have to ask you are you a snacker oh <laughs> oh, oh, oh yes i have uh i have this little um this little zesty citrus and honey uh, goat cheese spread with pears oh, right now from, so this is my, this is my snack for the day. Well, one of my five to 10 snacks for the day. Let's be honest. <laughs> so you're a day. cheese guy. I love it. I'm oh, a cheese. Yes. Yeah. Um, and speaking of sustainability, I got these from Imperfect Foods, which uh, mm -hmm. is all the kind of what grocery stores won't accept and everything. Uh, they make into these cheese spreads or or the pears and everything. So, so it's kind of oh, I love that. Yeah, it's nice. But. I've I've got my peanuts. I've been eating a lot of nuts and stuff. And so, because I, I I like salty and getting that saltiness. And so, John, I could talk to you for just 
ever. <laughs> and yeah. if, I can't wait to, until we're together again so we can actually go out and eat. Yes. And just uh, have a great time. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. And uh, any last words for our audience members? No, thank you so much for having me. And, uh, and I look forward to watching more of these. <laughs> oh, thank you. And Talk so I'm just going to say to everybody there, thank you again for tuning in to